All right, so quick review. Yesterday we talked about, or last program, we talked about macular degeneration. We mentioned fats, fat metabolism, uh, pigments. We mentioned digestion of fats, using digestive enzymes to help absorb fats, probiotics. We talked about selenium, uh, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin C. We also, at the end, talked a little bit about glutathione, which is the body's main cancer and antioxidant and general all-around protection molecule. And then we also mentioned algae. All of these are wonderful for protecting the macula, as well as other electrical, uh, highly electrical components of the body, the brain and the heart, et cetera. But there's some other nutrients that are involved in helping with macular degeneration. As we said on the last program, the two most important words in the phrase macular degeneration are macula and degeneration. Macula meaning the center of the eye, the fatty portion of the eye, and degeneration meaning a degenerative or breakdown process is occurring. Macular degeneration is a degenerative crisis, a degenerative issue. The body is generally breaking down. So in this sense, all of the general strategies that we use for building muscle or for building the connective tissue in the digestive system or for building healthy, strong collagen in the skin are going to be applicable to building the macula. Number one, that involves keeping inflammation down, and that always means digestive health. If there's any digestive issues, those need to be corrected. Above and beyond fat metabolism in the digestive system, food intolerances, food allergies, things getting into the blood through the digestive tract via leaky gut syndrome, all of that needs to be addressed. That means all of your building strategies for the digestive system, including glucosamine and chondroitin and cartilage. If you're using longevity products, the glucogel caps, bone soup, for example, is a wonderful source of cartilage and cartilage-containing products. You can use supplements like hyaluronic acid and polysaccharides that are found in algaes, et cetera. That's all in the interest of building a strong digestive tract. The second element, especially when it comes to inflammatory issues, is blood sugar. And there's a very intimate connection between what is called dysglycemia, or messed up blood sugar, diabetes and prediabetes and such, and macular degeneration. In fact, macular degeneration is thought to be a component of what's called metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a whole bunch of symptoms that form a, a constellation of disease states, including high blood pressure and, and autoimmune issues and, and uh, uh, infl inflammatory diseases of the brain like Parkinson's disease, et cetera, heart disease. All of these are manifestations of metabolic syndrome, which follows uh, prediabetes or diabetes, and macular degeneration and metabolic syndrome go hand in hand. So you got to take care of your blood sugar if you're dealing with macular degeneration, and it doesn't matter if you've gone to the doctor and he's told you that, oh, your blood sugar's fine. If you have macular degeneration, almost by definition, you want to consider that you have a blood sugar problem. That means stabilizing the blood sugar by first and foremost, reducing your intake of insulin and blood sugar spiking foods, foods that make your insulin and your blood sugar go up, and you know, the usual suspects, bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, desserts, fruit juices, etc. If not zero tolerance on those foods, at least reducing your intake of those foods. And a handy-dandy, easy way to reduce your intake of those foods, which can be addicting and tough to withdraw from, is to increase your protein, especially an amino acid called glutamine. Now, glutamine has a double role to play when it comes to protecting the eyes. Number one, it'll help you wean you off of sugar, reduce your blood sugar. And number two, as we talked about last week, it's a component of glutathione. So it'll help you make glutathione to protect your eyes, and it'll also allow you to wean yourself off of sugar to protect your eyes. Then there's all the sugar metabolizing nutrients, which tend to be electrical nutrients. The B complex, especially thiamine, vitamin B1, and niacin, vitamin B3, both, both of those are super important for helping with blood sugar, and they're also electrical. So making sure you're getting your B vitamins, making sure you're getting your vitamin C, another very important electrical nutrient, making sure you're getting vitamin E and coenzyme Q10, which are related. Vitamin E and coenzyme Q10 are essentially cousins, and both of those help the body and the eyes process electrical energy. And both of those can be helpful for blood sugar as well. So making sure you're using coenzyme Q10 and vitamin E. And then a few miscellaneous blood sugar stabilizing nutrients, arginine, which is an amino acid, taurine, which is an amino acid, magnesium, a very important mineral, which can be helpful for the eyes as well as directly for blood sugar, and also selenium, which we talked about last week for the eyes, but also can be helpful for stabilizing blood sugar. Um, chromium, vanadium, those are your superstar nutrients for helping stabilize blood sugar. And then alpha lipoic acid, which is kind of a, 
it's not an essential nutrient, it's sort of an ancillary or satellite nutrient, but it can still be helpful for processing, helping the body process sugar, and also has its own eye health benefits. It's got a little nugget of sulfur attached to it, alpha lipoic acid does, and sulfur has eye health benefits. And then last but not least, there's a very important relationship between eye health, between degenerative diseases, and low blood oxygen. So making sure you're getting enough oxygen, making sure you're sitting on the couch and practicing your slow, deep diaphragmatic breathing techniques, doing that as often as you can. You'll always know that you're getting enough oxygen by monitoring your blood pressure. As you get enough oxygen, your blood pressure will tend to drop. So if you're hypertensive, uh, using oxygen and breathing techniques, respiratory techniques, slow, deep breathing can help lower your blood pressure. And you can even use your blood pressure as a diagnostic tool to show you whether you're getting enough oxygen or not. Your blood pressure will tend to drop as you're oxygenating.